Okay, so today we are uh, going through the gross anatomy and blood supply of the stomach. So you can see the stomach is located in the mostly that region of the abdomen which is called left upper region of the abdomen. But regarding the quadrants, it is mostly in the left hypochondrium, left hypochondrium and epigastrium, left hypochondrium and epigastrium. But a normal stomach is around 12 inches long and uh, it, when it distends, it, it come down a lot below. But you have already learned about a plane which is called transpyloric plane. So if it is not, not a distensible and not so much of food is there, then the pylorus lies in transpyloric plane. But as it has got the capacity to expand a lot, so when you are taking a lot of food, then stomach comes down. So uh, what are the parts of the stomach? If we see here, this is esophagus. So esophagus joins in the stomach is a lower esophageal sphincter. And when the stomach end into first part of duodenum that is called pyloric sphincter. So this lower esophageal sphincter as it as you go down to lower esophageal sphincter, this part of the stomach is called cardia or cardiac end of the stomach. If we draw a uh, horizontal line across the lower esophageal sphincter, the part which is above an expanded part usually a lot of gas collect here and it, it when the gas collect here it can distend and it can lie beneath the left ventricle of the uh, uh, heart separated by diaphragm. So uh, this is called fundus of the stomach. So fundus can go uh, above if it distended with the gas. So this is fundus. Now beneath this area if you go down this is lesser curvature of the stomach and this whole thing is greater curvature of the stomach. So there is a notch here at the junction of esophagus and stomach. This is called cardiac notch, cardiac notch. So actually when you draw the line, you are drawing from the cardiac notch like this and above is fundus. This is called angular notch. If you draw a, a line uh, opposite the angular notch like this. So left side of it, this is body of the stomach and right side of it is pylorus of the stomach. So from the angular notch, if you draw a horizontal line above is fundus. From the angular, uh, from the angular notch, if you draw a vertical line, left side is body, right side is pylorus. This distended part of the pylorus is called pyloric antrum, then is pyloric canal and pyloric sphincter is actually an anatomical sphincter. So it is richly innervated by sympathetic nerve, circular muscles are there. So when you take your food at 8 o'clock, nearly 3 and half hour, so after 11.30 only, the, the sphincter will relax. Why? Because after you take the food 3 and half hour, uh, there will be churning of the food along with hydrochloric acid and other, other enzyme. And when churning is over, then only the pyloric sphincter will open and food will enter into duodenum. So a lesser curvature, angular notch, greater curvature, cardiac notch. Uh, there are two orifices, cardiac orifice and pyloric orifice. This is the lower esophageal sphincter, this is pyloric sphincter. This is, uh, there is an antero superior surface and postero inferior surface. Now, if we see here this uh, lower esophageal sphincter, there is not any anatomic sphincter here. The esophageal, intraesophageal pressure is less and intragastric pressure is more and there is cardiac notch. So this angulation allows the lower esophageal sphincter being closed by the difference of pressure between intragastric and intraesophageal pressure. So suppose due to any reason your uh, uh, body has got this pressure difference is altered, so naturally this uh, spinter does not work, this physiological spinter does not work. 
so the acid can go inside the duodenum uh, inside the esophagus inside the esophagus and cause burning of the esophageal mucosa that is called reflux esophagitis when the uh, stomach uh, is full with food you can see that on the stomach wall there are uh, elevation these elevations are called gastric rugi and this gastric rugi uh, are actually folds mucus fold uh, this this is mucosa and submucosa together and this gastric rugi is allows the stomach to distend when the lot of foods are there now there are oblique muscles in the stomach so the oblique muscle is usually like that from here from fundus downward this contraction of oblique muscle allows the food along a channel forming forming a channel along the inner uh, part of lesser curvature so the going uh, going down of the food in a channel parallel to the lesser curvature is called gastric canal gastric canal or megantracy so that is why you see that if the food is always channel there most of the time we get formation of uh, gastric ulcer along this region now if you see the anterior aspect of the stomach anterior relation is left lobe of the liver diaphragm left lobe of your diaphragm and anterior abdominal wall and uh, uh, the lower part of the stomach actually overlap by transverse colon if we remove the stomach now and you can see what structure forms the stomach bed the structure forming stomach bed are the uh, you can see spleen diaphragm left part of the diaphragm a major organ is pancreas and at the top of the pancreas there is a artery which is called splenic artery which is a branch from the celiac trunk so this is celiac trunk coming from abdominal aorta dividing into left gastric artery splenic artery and hepatic artery so the splenic artery forms a structure which is behind the stomach so uh, apart from spleen diaphragm pancreas splenic artery you can also see like the kidney here so the left kidney and left suprarenal and between the transverse colon and pancreas this peritoneum is called transverse mesocolon so these are the structure lying behind the stomach and they are also called lesser sac now if there is a ulcer on the posterior wall of the stomach and it penetrate it perforate it can actually involve this splenic artery and cause erosion of splenic artery causing hemorrhage or even you have a ulcer on the posterior wall of the stomach the content can go and infect the pancreas or even kidney so pancreatic cyst or even uh, pyelonephritis can also happen now we will go to the ab blood supply of the stomach so we have already seen the celiac trunk so celiac trunk give a very big artery which is supplying almost two third of blood supply to the stomach this is called left gastric artery so the left gastric artery lying along the lesser curvature of the stomach there is another artery here which is called right gastric artery and this right gastric artery comes from the hepatic artery on the greater curvature there is a artery called left gastroviploic artery so this left gastroviploic artery comes from the splenic artery so left gastroviploic artery coming from splenic artery the right gastroviploic artery is another artery lying on the greater curvature coming from gastroduodenal artery there is another artery here behind the fundus which is called short gastric artery which also comes from the splenic artery so left gastroviploic and short gastric comes from splenic artery right gastroviploic comes from gastroduodenal artery if you see the uh, veins all the veins actually go to the uh, portal vein and uh, stomach is enclosed in two peritoneal layer between the stomach between the stomach and liver between the lesser curvature between the lesser curvature of the stomach to liver is lesser omentum lesser omentum and from the greater curvature of the stomach 
from the greater curvature of the stomach there is a four layer peritoneal curtain goes down to give protection to the abdominal viscera particularly small and large intestine so this is called greater omentum so if you put the stomach here you can see the greater omentum here so this is the greater curvature and from the greater curvature the four layered peritoneal ligament coming down to mainly protect the small and large intestine this is called greater omentum this is also called policeman of the abdomen so you can see the left gastroviploic and right gastroviploic the branches hang in the greater omentum making it a lot of giving it a lot of vascularity now regarding the nerve supply of the uh, stomach all the uh, glands which are secreting the acid they depend on one nerve that is called parasympathetic nerve vagus nerve so there are two vagus nerve part here anterior gastric nerve and here posterior gastric nerve the anterior gastric nerve come from left vagus and posterior gastric nerve come from right vagus this gastric nerves they supply the glands which secrete the gastric gland which secrete the hydrochloric acid and pepsin so uh, previously before the advent of newer drug when you have gastric ulcer so the the surgeons used to find out the small small branches of gastric nerve and they used to do uh, vagotomy to uh, reduce Uh, gastric acidity to prevent gastric ulcer but nowadays new medicines have come up so this vagotomy is not done the main sympathetic nerves of the uh, stomach come from t6 to t9 and they mostly involve the uh, they they control the sphincters sphincteric activity uh, they actually control the pyloric sphincter 